Today, I'm going to show you the amazing power of smart objects in Photoshop. Hey guys, and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace, and you can find me on flurn.com, where we make learning Photoshop and photography fun. And I'm excited about today's episode because I'm a big Photoshop dork, and anytime I can do something super dorky in Photoshop, it just gives me a big thrill. But we're gonna be playing with smart objects. And for those of you guys who aren't too into smart objects, this is gonna be an awesome opportunity to learn what smart objects actually do and how you can use smart objects to benefit your current workflow. First, we're gonna explain how smart objects work and how they differ from regular objects. Then we're going to go and show you some smart filters that you can use to apply on your smart objects that will allow you to change those effects after they're actually created. And to finish it off, we're going to show you guys how to use linked objects. Basically, you can make a change on one document and have that change apply to many different documents that are all linked to the original. It's going to be a super cool episode. You don't want to miss it. All right. So here we are in Photoshop, and this is a perfect example of sometime we would actually use a smart object. I've got a couple of layouts here that I'm testing. This is the, the Flurn method, uh, Photoshop made simple. And let's say I want to do some uh, basically layouts for my website or whatever it is. And we do a lot of our website design here in-house. So this is actually from our website. So I've got two documents. They're the exact same. Here on the left, we're going to use smart objects. And then here on the right, we're not going to use smart objects. OK, let's go ahead and open a new image. So I'm going to hit Command-O. We're going to open an image. And there we go. So far, totally normal. This is just how you would do something regularly. We've got our image open. And um, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and place it onto both of these documents. All right, so let's go ahead and just use the Move tool. I'm going to hit Shift and click and drag from one image to another one. There we go. And we're going to do the same thing. There we go. And let's go ahead and you know what? We're just going to minimize this for now. There we go. So this guy here, let's go ahead and hit Command T. And uh, we'll just bring this down. We'll chain link those. And let's just say this is going to be 75% of the original size. All right. So right now, all I'm doing is prepping the files to make sure they're about the same. All right. We haven't done anything with smart objects just yet. So you guys should know how to do all this stuff. All right. There we go. Let's say this is what, what we want our, our layouts to look like. OK, so we've got two different layouts at this point. Now let's go ahead and get into creating a smart object. So on the left, this is where we're actually going to be using our smart, smart objects. So what we're going to do is I'm going to right click here on our layer, and I'm going to go up to where it says Convert to Smart Object. OK, and it's literally just that simple. We can see there's a little logo here on the bottom of this image, and now it's a smart object. Now this layer on the right, this document on the right, rather, we're going to leave it as a regular layer. We're not going to keep this as a, we're not going to use the smart object here, so I can show you the difference. OK. Now, the first big difference you're going to notice is anytime you need to transform an image, uh, if you were to make an image very, very small and then try to make it larger again, you're going to lose a lot of image quality. And that's just how images are made, because the, the actual image itself is made up of pixels. And if you keep changing those pixels around, the image doesn't keep the original quality. Now, a smart object, however, links back to an original file. Like, the, it keeps the source file in a different place. And so you can keep changing your your image basically as a smart object, and the source file is going to stay in the same place. That's going to allow you to make those changes and not lose image quality. So let's see it at work. Basically, here's our smart object. Let's hit Command T, and I'm going to shrink this way, 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 way small. There we go. And then we're going to click on this one, and I'm going to shrink this really small as well. All right, so we can see basically we've lost almost all information on both of these layers. Now let's go ahead on our smart object, where you can see layer one, and it is a smart object. We're going to hit Command-T, and I'm going to make this larger again. We can even make it larger than the original. There we go, and we can see the full, we can see the full quality. Now, if I make this guy a bit larger, we're going to hit Enter, you can see how bad the quality has become. Because we've really changed those amount of pixels, we've made them small, and then we're trying to blow them back up again. Let's just hit F to full screen so we can see the differences between this guy, and here's the image with the smart object. There we go. It's complete full resolution. So if you guys are going to be making lots of changes to anything like a logo or an image that's you know generally in something like a layout form, smart object is the way to go. All right, let's go ahead and exit out of that full screen. We'll just zoom out here so we can see before the, the two side by sides. Here we go. 
All right, so on the left hand, we have our smart object document. On the right hand, we have our regular document. Now, let's go ahead and talk about some other amazing things you can do with a smart object, things like smart filters. So what's a smart filter? It's basically the same as any other filter, except it's applied to a smart object. And the benefit is that you can change a lot of what goes on in that filter after you've already applied it to that layer. Let's see it in work. OK, so here's our smart object. And we've got layer one. Let's go ahead and give it a blur. I'm going to go to Filter. We're going to go down to Blur. And we're going to go now go to Gaussian Blur, just a standard Gaussian Blur. And let's go ahead and bump that up. All right, that looks great. Let's just type in 50 pixels. That looks great. Let's hit OK. OK, now let's go to our image where we're not using a smart filter. I'm going to go to Filter, Gaussian Blur, 50 pixels, and we're good. So they look pretty similar now, right? Now, on this guy, I, I'm pretty much stuck. I've got this smart, the blur, and there, there's nothing else I can do. I can't like unblur part of it. That's not an option here. Now, here where I use the smart object, you can see it looks a little bit different. We can see we have our layer one, and then we've got smart filters, and then we've got Gaussian blur, and we've got a couple of different options here. Now, this is where it gets really, really cool. Now, let's say I don't want the Gaussian blur anymore. All I have to do is turn off the Gaussian blur, and guess what? There's no undo. I just turn the Gaussian blur off or back on, and that's all there is to it, because it's linking the original file. Now, let's say I want to change that Gaussian blur. Just double click right here where it says Gaussian blur, and I can actually change the amount of the blur on the image. So if you're ever unsure about how much blur a layer should get, turn it into a smart object first, and then apply the blur. All right, let's go ahead and lessen the blur a little bit. We'll hit OK there. Now, another cool thing you can do is you can actually, you know what, just for this, let's bring up just a bit more. You can use this smart filters. There's a layer mask for the filters. So if I were to grab my brush tool and paint black on my layer mask here, I am literally painting away the filter. I'm painting away the blur from a certain part of the image, which is impossible. You cannot do this with, with this type of image. If you just paint the image away, the, the whole image is going to away. You, you cannot paint away the blur. OK, so here we've got a layer mask that's just for the smart filters. The other thing you can do is stack filters together. So let's click back on our layer here. We're going to go to Filter. I'm going to go to Blur, and I'm going to go down to Motion Blur. There we go. And we're going to hit Angle 0 and Distance of 200. Now, you can't see it much because it's already got the Gaussian blur, but we're going to go ahead and hit, hit OK. And now you can see we've got a couple of different blurs stacked. We've got a motion blur and a Gaussian blur. Now, if we want to see what it looks like with just the Gaussian, just sorry, just the motion blur, let's click off the Gaussian blur. And there we can see the motion blur. We can turn that on or off. And we can change all these settings at any time. If I click on my motion blur, I can change that again after it's made. I can even go in here and click right where we see a little levels slider. Let's just double click there. And now I can actually change, this is cool, I can change the blending mode of the blur to something like screen. So the blur itself will apply itself as a screen adjustment on to the image. Something you won't be using a lot, but it's cool to know that you can do that much with your smart filters. All right, let's hit OK. And then this image, we're still right back to here. There, there's really nothing we can do to get back to our original image, except maybe hit undo. With this guy, all we have to do is turn these smart filters off and we're back to our original image. That's awesome. All right, guys, so we've gone over some amazing benefits with using smart objects in Photoshop. Now, the last thing I want to show you is going to be just, it'll blow your mind. It's called a linked object. So for this, what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and open up my original image. There we go, this guy that we minimized earlier. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and save this image. So I'm going to hit Shift-Command-S to bring save, and we're just going to call this linked one. There we go. And let's go ahead and make this a PSD. So linked one.psd. And we're going to hit save here. OK, so now we have linked one. Now, on these two documents, let's just go ahead and make both of these images invisible. We, do, we don't need those anymore. We're going to be using instead a linked object. So let's go to this document. And what I'm going to do is going to go to file and then go down to place linked. Place linked. And I'm going to click on our linked one.psd, and we're going to hit place. There we go. Let's bring that down right there. Cool. And we're going to do the same thing here. I'm going to go to file. We're going to go down to place linked. We're going to choose linked one.psd, hit place. There we go. Let's bring it right on down and hit enter. 
So now we've got a couple linked objects in our images, and these are amazing. The reason is you can change your original image and have it basically affect all the other documents that are linked back to the original. We'll show you how to do it. All right, so here is our image. We've got linked1.psd. You can see these are all separate documents. Now, let's say you wanted to create a web page or a layout or something like that that you had to use, uh, basically reference the same image over and over again. Well, we're going to change linked one, and we're going to see it automatically update on our other uh, documents, which is amazing. So let's go to Window, and then down here to Actions. We're actually going to use uh, some of the Flurn method actions here on this image to kind of show you guys how this works. Um, we're going to start with some of the fashion coloring options here. Let's go to Flurn Color Teal Orange. So let's go ahead and click that on. There we go. And we'll just go ahead and close out the actions. So Basically, we've applied one of the Flurn method actions, the teal orange coloring, to this document. Now, all I have to do is save this. So I'm going to hit Command S. There we go. Hit OK. And it's going to automatically update it on every single document that is linked to this original. This is amazing, guys. Let me do it again. Let's go down to Window and over here to Actions. Let's just to not apply something else. So let's uh, try Rich Chick over top of teal orange. There we go. Let's go ahead and close that out. Hit Command S on this document, and you can see it's automatically updating on all the other documents. And these are smart objects as well. So I could, you know, I can make these really, really small. I can even duplicate these if I want to. I can hit Command J and duplicate it again. And all of these, because they all linked to the original image, let's click on this. I'll just turn this back off, go to the original, and hit Command or Control S. And you can see all of these images are now changed back to the original. So by using smart objects and linked objects, I can make a change in one place and have it affect every single document in the exact same way. If this episode didn't blow your mind, I don't know what will. We did some great things in this episode. We started off by showing you guys the differences between a smart object and a regular object. How a smart object is basically linked and you can make changes and it won't affect the original image. Then we showed you guys how you can use smart filters on your image and even use things like a layer mask on those smart filters. And then to top it all off, we showed you guys how to use linked objects, how you can edit one central image and then have that affect every single linked object on different documents in Photoshop. Thanks so much for watching today's episode, guys. It's super cool. You can hang out with me and learn some Photoshop. If you like what we're doing here at Flurn and you want to learn more Photoshop and photography, just click on your screen right now. We'll give you a big subscribe button to YouTube. We release free Photoshop and photography tutorials every single week. And if you have an idea for an episode or a comment about today's episode, just leave it right down below. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks so much, guys. We'll learn you later. Bye, everyone. Today, I'm going to show you the amazing power of smart objects in Photoshop. If you guys are like Photoshop buffs and nerds like me, you already know about smart objects. But... All right. If you're a Photoshop dork like me, I'm so excited about today's episode. It's an object episode. <laughs> I'm so excited I can't even speak. We're doing. We're going to show you how to edit the source. We're going to show you how to edit source images that will. All right. We're going to show you how to edit the source images. All right. We're going to show you how to use smart. We're going to show you how to use smart fil. We're also going to show you how to use smart filters. We're we're also going to show you how to use smart filters. Being able to. We're also going to. We're also going to show you guys how to use smart filters, which give you guys... Oh, crap. I did that whole thing with the, with the color checker right here. <laughs> well, that can go in bloopers. <laughs> cool. If this episode didn't blow your mind, I don't know what will. This is... <laughs> All right. Cool. If this episode didn't blow your mind, I don't know what will. We did some great things in this episode. First, we started... All right. First, we... We sharded. I sharded. <laughs>